Hi, today we're going to see how to install a BAPI alternative that is completely self-hostable and it's called LifeKit. It is actually the software that the voice option inside of the ChatGPT app is using. As you can see, you could just go for the cloud version because you have a pricing page here. But today I'm going to show you how to self-host the whole software. So that the only thing that you'll have to pay when you are building a voice AI agent is for the phone number in Twilio and then for the AI that it's going to do the talking and the generation and all this but we're going to be using Google Live API for that so depending on the scale of your project it's going to be pretty much free so first of all you'll need a VPS or any kind of Linux server to be able to self-host LifeKit I'm going to get a GBPS from Hetzner because I already have an account and I'm already using Hetzner for some projects. So I'm going to head to console. I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to call it LiveKit. If you already have a VPS, you can just skip this part and go to the installation process. But yeah, enter here, click on servers, add server. I'm going to get this in Falkenstein, then Ubuntu. I'm just going to stick with it 20.04 shared CPU and I'm going to get the Ampere one because it's much cheaper. It's like four gigs of RAM and two virtual CPUs for just three euros. It's like really cheap. So I'm just going to stick with this and I'm pretty sure that I will just need these resources. Create and buy and it is being deployed. Great. I'm already inside of the server. So we are ready to start with installation guide. So now we're going to head to documentation, scroll down and click on virtual machine. And it's going to take us into this deploying guide. Couple of prerequisites is that you need a domain to do this. Also, you need the ability to add DNS records. Most probably your domain provider gives you the option of adding DNS records. I'm going to show you now how to do it. And also another prerequisite is that you'll need all these ports available. So I'm going to head to my domain provider and show you what DNS records you have to add. Great, so you'll have to head to the DNS section of your provider, of your domain provider. You could ask them or just Google where this section is located in the control panel of your provider. But in my case, it's just here and you'll have to enter a new entry or add a new record. Actually, you'll have to add two records in this case. I just wanted to send it to lifekit.mydomain and lifekit turn my domain, okay? And the type is going to be A, type A, and the value is going to be the IP of the BPS where you'll be installing lifekit, okay? So just add these two DNS records. It may take some time for the internet to process this change or this creation, but probably it's going to be done by the time that we end with the installation. It may take some time for the internet to process the change or the creation of these DNS entries or DNS records. So be patient, but probably it's going to be finished by the time that you end up installing LifeKit. That's what actually we're going to be doing now. But before doing that, we need to install Docker. So in order to install Docker and Docker Compose, you'll need to execute all these commands inside of the terminal. These commands will be in the description down below. So you could just copy paste all these commands. I have already installed the whole thing because I just noticed that I wasn't recording this part. So yeah, things happen. Great. So we'll get back to the live kit docs and now we can just copy these commands, pasting them here. And I completely forgot to start Docker. That's why it was giving me some errors. If you are getting these same errors, 
just write sudo systemctl start docker, sudo systemctl enable docker, and then sudo user mod ag docker dollar user. This last command is just going to enable you to run docker commands without having to write sudo at the beginning of every command every time. So now I'm just going to paste the commands that I was going to execute. So yeah, just execute this and it's going to start the whole installation thing. It may take some time. And now we are going to cover the configuration thing. You have like different options, but in this case, I just want a live kit server that it's like the most basic thing. So I'm going to get this. Now we have to set the main domain. If you remember, we set two records in our DNS. One was live kit and your domain and the other live kit turn and your domain. So in this case, I'm going to write live kit dot my domain base link sl.com and then the turn domain. So yeah, live kit turn dot my domain. Now choose let's encrypt. It works really good. So just choose that latest and no. Now you could select cloud init from Amazon, Linux or Ubuntu, but most of the time I would recommend you to use startup shell scripts. So that's the one that I'm going to use. Great. So now we're going to have the server URL, the API key and the API secret that we've got. So I'm just going to copy this and save it into a note. And now we have to get back to the live kit docs that we were using and just copy this command here. Just cd to opt live kit your domain. And now that we are inside that, we're going to run the command that I've copied. Actually, I've had some issues with that exact command. Just if you have those issues that you can see here that says command not found, you can just execute sh init script dot sh. Okay, that's the script that it's going to install everything. And we just have to wait for the installation to end. Great. So once it has finished, we have to get back to the docs page and a new folder inside of slash opt called LifeKit should be installed. So now just to get everything working, we're going to copy these two commands just to stop the LifeKit Docker server and to start it again. And just to be sure that everything is working, we're going to swap this start with status and you should be seeing the service as active. Also, another command that you can run is curl minus V HTTP colon slash 127.0.0.1 colon 7880 slash. This is the internal URL to get to the LifeKit server. So now I'm going to show you how to build an agent. Actually, it's already pre-built, so don't worry about that. You do not have to code or anything like that. Just swap some API credentials and that's going to be it. And we're going to be able to talk with it inside of our PC terminal. And yeah, of course, in the future, I'm going to do a video on how to build a front-end app for your AI boys agent to be able to integrate it into your website web app, mobile app, or whatever you want. So you'll have to head to this GitHub repository that it's down below in the description. And I just wanted to mention that this GitHub repository has been built by David Noonan. Go check his channel. He also talks about AI voice agents. And I didn't want to build an agent from scratch. It's not that really complicated, but he already added AI avatar support and also added a website. So yeah, that's why I have chosen this repository. So just download the code, download zip and zip it. And now I'm going to open this folder with cursor. Great. So now that I have opened it, you could remove the website thing if you want. We are not going to use it in this video. And the good thing about this GitHub repository too is that it integrates with MCP from NADN. So you can actually build an MCP server with NADN and then this agent is going to use that MCP server to access tools and all this stuff. Because yeah, you can add tools inside this file, but it's going to be much easier if you use NADN.
So the first thing that I would recommend you to do is go to agent.py and change this OpenAI to Google because I found that the Google Live API models, the voice models, sound better, sound more realistic, and they are actually a lot cheaper compared to the OpenAI real-time models. And yeah, if you are in the free tier, maybe you don't use the voice AI agent that much, the Google Voice API, it's going to be completely free. If you use it a little bit more, maybe you have to start paying. And still in that case, it's going to be much cheaper compared to the OpenAI one. Also remove this from LiveKit plugins import tabs. This is just to use avatars inside of this agent. In this case, I'm not going to use it, so I'm just going to remove this. You can also leave this commented out just with a hashtag, okay? But I'm going to remove it entirely because I don't want to have an avatar because it looks terrible, just to be clear. Remove this code here also, and also remove this part. Control S to save. So now get back to the LifeKit docs and you should go to AI agents, scroll down a lot, and in the partner spotlight part, you should click on this dropdown of Google, click on Gemini Life API, scroll down and copy this part here. It is going to use the Gemini 2.0 flash because it's the cheaper one. And just replace this code here with the one that we have just copied, format it correctly, just so that it looks good. And we can just remove this parameter here because David already added the instructions uh, here in the assistant class. So just remove this part. You can also remove the temperature if you want. I'm just going to leave it at, as this. And if you want to change the voice, you can just scroll down a bit and you're going to find the full list here. So just click here. But I actually like the pack voice. So I'm going to leave this one. And now an important part is to go to .env. And here we're going to be adding the LifeKit URL, the API key secret. Uh, we have to change this actually to Google API key. And now I'm going to copy the server URL that I copied before, paste it here, copy the API key, and then copy the API secret. Save it. Now we'll have to head to Gemini AI Studio, click get started, and create a new API key, okay? Create a new API key, select your project. In this case, you'll need a Google Cloud project. So in case you haven't already created a project, head to Google Cloud, click console. Then you'll need to head here and create a new project. I'm going to call this project, I don't know, tutorial and a bunch of numbers, create. And the project will be creating. It has been created successfully. And now this new project is going to appear here. I'm going to select this one and create a new API key. I'm going to copy the key and paste it here in Google API key. And also you can remove all this because this is just API keys and IDs and all these for the avatar. So you can just remove this. And we're not going to set up the NADN MCP server here. So now the thing that we are going to do is with Control Shift P, I'm going to open a new terminal with PowerShell in my case. I'm going to enter backend, okay, just with CD. And now that I'm inside with dear, I'm going to check that I'm actually inside. As you can see, I see all the files that are inside here and I'm going to create a new virtual environment. Okay, so just execute Python. I'm assuming that you already have Python and pip installed. If not, you can just ask ChatGPT and it's going to guide you through the whole installation process. Python m and venv ven. And it's going to generate this folder here. It's basically a virtual environment where we're going to install all the requirements that are listed here. 
actually we could change this OpenAI to Google and this LifeKit plugin to OpenAI to Google as well. We could also skip this LifeKit agent taboos, but I'm going to leave it, doesn't matter. And now we're going to have to activate the virtual environment. So just type venv slash scripts slash activate. And it is going to activate. How do you know? It appears this as a prefix in the path of where the terminal is in. And now just checking that we are inside the right directory and that we see the requirement.txt, we're going to execute pip install minus r requirements with tab it's going to autocomplete and just press enter and it's going to start installing all the dependencies inside of the virtual environment it's just to make sure that you can have like several python projects and python software running in your pc without all of them colliding and breaking stuff right so now that everything has finished it has come the time to start the agent and start talking to it the command to start the agent inside the console it's going to be python agent you can just tap it and have it autocomplete console and it's going to start and as you can see i'm talking with it just let it answer i don't know if it's responding because i'm not wearing headphones right now but yeah i'm just going to let it respond i'd like to book a meeting not a meeting actually a room sorry great and once you want to stop it just press Control c and it's going to stop the process Great, so that's going to be pretty much the basics of building voice AI agents. We're going to be building the different AI agents on top of this and also using NADN to add tools to these agents. And don't worry, because we are going to add phone numbers. We're going to be able to do outbound calls through NADN automations and all this stuff. It's going to be really cool. So let's see you in the next videos.